Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be looking at some tricky vector geometry questions, the type where they ask you to find K or they ask you to prove a line is straight. Before we get stuck in, there are a couple of things you should know about vectors that will be helpful for these problems. So the first one is that parallel vectors are multiples. So parallel vectors are multiples, uh, scalar multiples, I should say. Okay, what do I mean by this? Well, if we draw a vector, let's call that A. If we have any other vector parallel to A, say like this, it must be a multiple of A. So this might be a half A. Or we could have a parallel vector going in the opposite direction. Okay, and it would still have to be a multiple of A. It would be a negative, but uh, so for example, this one might be negative 2A. So in general, any vectors that are parallel, we say they would be Ka, so a multiple of A. Okay, so that's the first point. The second point is that if the vectors AB and BC are parallel, then they are collinear. Then they are collinear. What does this mean? In other words, AC is a straight line. Okay, so from A to C must be a straight line. That's because they share a point. So if we were to draw this in a diagram, uh, we might have A there and B here and C here. So A, B, C. And because A, B and B, C are parallel, it must be a straight line. So we say collinear. And this is the same if we're talking about the vectors uh, a, B, and A, C. Okay, so, you know, if A, B, and A, C are parallel, they share a point, then they're collinear. Another little note is if this was vector A, this would have to be some multiple of A. These points don't sound too complicated, right? But it does get difficult when you try to apply them in these problems. All right, so let's get stuck into the first one here. The first question says, in the diagram, M is the midpoint of OA and N divides OC in the ratio 1 to 2. Point B lies on AN. OM equals the vector A and ON equals the vector B. MB equals a fifth MC and AB equals KAN. Find the value of K. And this would be a four mark question. To start with, just try to apply the information to the diagram. There will always be a diagram with these types of questions in GCSEs. So try to take the information and Think about what it means on the diagram. So for the first one, OM equals A and ON equals B. That's already marked on the diagram. They're here, those vectors. And then we've got the point B on AN. Okay, that's here. And M is the midpoint of OA. So what does that mean? Well, if OM is the vector A, then MA must also be the vector A. Okay, so we've added a bit of information to the diagram. Next, N divides OC in the ratio 1 to 2. Okay, so OC is here. Uh, that means that if ON is B, then NC must be 2B, right? If that's one part, this is two parts, this will be 2B. Next, they tell us MB equals the fifth MC. So if this was one part of this line, MC, then this would be four parts. And also AB equals KAN. So AB is here. We could say that's KAN. So now that we've interpreted all this information on the diagram, the next step is to start to try to solve this. So as I said, we want AN. How can we find AN? Uh, so from A to N, I could go to O. So that's negative 2A plus B. And that could get me from A to N. So I have a vector for AN. So this was B take 2A. Next, I also want a vector for AB. So to go from A to B, I could go from A to M and then M to B. So to find AB, I need MB. For MB, I need MC. And I can find MC because that's a negative A plus 3B. Okay, so did you follow the steps I took there? I'm looking for AB. To find AB, I need MB. To find MB, I need MC. So there's lots of little steps you need to put together in these types of questions. Uh, but you can kind of work back from what you want to get. As long as you know what you want to find or what you need to find, you work backwards 
and eventually you'll get there. So as I said, I want MC, the vector MC. And that was negative A plus 3B or 3B take A. Okay, then MB is a fifth of that. So MB equals a fifth uh, of 3B take A. Okay, and now I have MB, I can find a vector for AB. So let's say AB is equal to a negative A plus a fifth times 3B take A. And then you need to simplify this. So expand out the brackets. This is negative A plus a three on five B take a fifth A and then negative A take a fifth A. That's like negative one and a fifth or negative six on five A plus three fifth B. Once you get to this point, we know AB is KAN and we have AN here. So what you want to do is try to factorize something out so that you end up with AN. So then you will have KAN. So can we factorize something here so that we will have B take 2A? Uh, and I'll write this slightly differently, maybe to make it a little bit easier. So this would be 3 fifths B take 6 fifths A. If we factorize a fifth out, let's just do that first. That would be 3B take 6A. Uh, and then remember I want B take 2A so I could factorize out a 3. So then this would be 3 fifths B take 2A. So now we have AB equal to something AN. All right, so we can say this is equal to 3 fifths AN. All right, so then K equals 3 fifths. All right, so that's the first example. On to the next one. Question two says ABCD is a square. P divides AB in the ratio four to one and Q divides DC in the ratio two to three. M is the midpoint of AD and N is the midpoint of MC. Prove that P, N, Q, P, N, and Q lie in the same straight line. This is again a four mark question. Again, let's interpret this information on the diagram so we get a picture of what's going on. So where can we start? P divides AB in the ratio four to one. So P is up here, AB is here. Uh, so this is four parts, this is one part, okay. Q divides DC in the ratio two to three. Uh, so this is two parts, this is three parts. And M is the midpoint of AD, okay. So these are the same lengths and N is the midpoint of MC, and these are the same lengths, all right? So we want to prove P and Q is a straight line, that's this line here. This question is interesting in that it doesn't give you any labels for the vector, so you actually have to go ahead and label some of these vectors yourself. Uh, so we could call AB, so AB, we could call that vector A and AD, the vector B. Um, so the first thing I would say then is AB equals A and AD equals B. By the way, I should have said at the start of this video, give these a go. If you want to pause the video on each question and give it a go yourself. So let's continue then. Uh, we want to prove this is a straight line. This generally involves finding either PN or NQ or PN and PQ and showing that they are parallel, right? So that's this second point here. If A, B, and B, C are parallel, then they are collinear. So we want to try to do that. So we want some vectors for either PN or NQ or PQ, two of those three. Which ones do you pick? Just pick any. So I'm going to pick PN and NQ. I'm going to try to find those vectors. If that turns out to be too difficult, I might find the other ones. So for PN, I can find PN actually because I have PA, AM, and NQ, uh, MN, sorry. Uh, so PN, I can work out. This would be negative 4 fifths A, 4 fifths A, because remember AB was the vector A. This was four parts of that line. So PA will be negative 4 fifths A plus AM, which is a half B. 
and then plus MN. Actually, I don't have MN. So you can see I'm working backwards. I'm trying to find PN. I don't have MN, so I need to find MN next. How do I find MN? I need MC. So the next step would be to find MC. So let's get an expression for MC. This would be a half B plus A. So a half B plus A. I guess that's the other point. If this is a square, DC would also be the vector A because it's parallel and it's equal length. So ve the position of vectors doesn't matter. It's really only the direction and the length that matters. So we can say DC is also the vector A. So MC is a half B plus A and then MN is a half of that. So uh, actually I should also write that down. So MN then is a half of this, a half of MC, which we could write as a quarter B plus a half A. So PN then was PA plus AN plus MN. I need to add this vector MN on, that's a quarter B plus a half A. Okay, then we should probably go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So this is negative four fifths plus a half. We need to be good with fractions here. Um, so you could write this, well, okay, let's take some notes over here. We've got negative four fifths plus a half. This would be like negative eight on 10 plus five on 10. So that's uh, negative three on 10. Okay, so this would simplify to negative three on 10 A and then a half plus a quarter is three quarters. So that's plus three quarters B. Okay, so we have a vector for PN. Next was NQ. So I want to work out the vector NQ. This would be negative MN. So I have MN, so it would be the negative of this. So negative uh, a half A take a quarter B plus a half B and then plus DQ which was two fifths of A so plus two fifths A all right and then let's go ahead and simplify this now so that's a half plus two fifths uh, well it's going to be well again let's take some notes so what's this this is a negative 5 on 10 plus 4 on 10. This is uh, this is positive 1 on 10. Okay, so that's 1 on 10a. And then negative a quarter plus a half is negative, sorry, positive a quarter b. All right, that should be a plus sign. Okay, now I have pn and nq. Can I write one of them as a multiple of the other. And I've just realized negative five plus four is not positive one, that's negative one. So this is going to be negative one on 10a plus a quarter b. All right, apologies for that. Okay, can we write one as a multiple of the other? Uh, well, if I factorize the three out of this, uh, out of pn, I could say this is three times negative one on 10a plus a quarter B, which is NQ, right? This, this expression or this vector here is the same as NQ. So therefore, we can say PN equals three lots of NQ. And remember that point about parallel vectors are sharing the same point being collinear. So that's that situation here. So we can say therefore PNQ uh, collinear and we are done with this question okay on to the next one question 3 says in the diagram OPQ is a triangle point R lies on the line PQ such that PR to RQ equals 1 to 2 point S lies on the line through OR such that OR to OS equals 1 to 3 show that OS equals 2A plus B again start off by interpreting the information on the diagram so uh, they tell us that's a triangle, fine. Point R is here and it lies on PQ such that PR to RQ is one to two. So this would be one part of that line, this would be two parts. 
point S lies on the line through OR, so point S is up here, such, a, such that OR to OS is 1 to 3. So this will be one part of that line, this would be three parts, and we want to find a vector for OS. Okay, so this could involve finding OR, so if we find the vector OR, we can multiply it by 3 and get, sorry, multiply it by 4 and get OS. So this is going to involve, involve finding the vector OR. So OR would be A plus some part of PQ. All right, so now we need to find PQ. So you notice when you try to answer these questions, there'll always be a part where you, there'll be a missing part and you just need to go ahead and fill that in. So as I said, PQ is what I need to find first. So PQ, what's that? That's uh, negative A plus B. Okay, so then OR is A plus a third PQ. So this is A plus a third times negative A plus B. And then go ahead and simplify this. So this would be uh, A take a third A is two thirds A and then a third B. Okay, so I have OR which is two thirds A plus a third B. And I've just realized I read the question wrong. Um, so uh, this is a lesson in what not to do apparently. This says OR to OS is one to three. Okay, uh, so that wouldn't be one to three for that line. This is, the, this is one part of this entire line. Uh, so this, if we were to split this line up into a ratio, that would actually be one to two. Okay, so anyways, this basically means we need to multiply OR by 3, not 4, to get OS. So OS is going to be 3 OR. So this is 3 multiplied by 2 thirds A plus a third B, which is uh, 2A plus B. Okay, so we've ended up with uh, what they were asking us to show. On to the next part, it says point T is added to the diagram such that TO equals B, prove that points T, P and S lie on the same straight line. Let's go back to the diagram to add in T. Okay, so where would T be? Uh, T is added to, to the diagram such that T, O equals B. All right, so T, o, T must be over here somewhere. Um, so that T, O equals B. And we need to show that T, P and S line the same straight line. Okay, so T, P and S. I'm not sure if this will be a straight line on my diagram. Oh, look at that, almost. All right, so anyways, it's not meant to be exact, it's just to give you an idea of what's going on. So we need to show this as a straight line. Uh, this could involve finding T, P and P, S, or T, P and T, S, either two of those will be fine. Well, I can see TP immediately. That will be B plus A. Uh, so let's go ahead and write that down. So TP is equal to B plus A. Okay, then I want uh, something else. So, well, I know, I know OS and TO. So let's go ahead and find TS. So TS would be B plus OS, so TS is equal to B plus OS, which we found in the last part, that was 2A plus B, 2A plus B, which is equal to 2A plus 2B, and if we were to factorize the two out, this would be two times uh, A plus B, or B plus A, same thing. Okay, so therefore, TS, is equal to 2TP, and because they share a point, they must be collinear, so we can say, therefore, uh, the points, the points, T, P, and S are collinear. Okay, that's the next one done. On to the next question, part four. Again, just a reminder, give these a go uh, before I go through them. Uh, it's good practice. So question four says OABC is a parallelogram. OMC, ABP, and CBN are straight lines. M is the midpoint of OC. 
BN equals 2CB, OA equals A, OC equals B, AB equals KAB where K is the scalar multiple. Given that MPN is a straight line, find the value of K. Again, interpret the information on the diagram first. So we're told they're all straight lines. Fine. M is the midpoint of OC. Okay, that's useful. BN equals 2CB. BN equals 2CB. So if this was one part of that line, this would be two parts. OA equals A. Okay, that's the vector A going in this direction. OC equals B going in this direction. And AP equals KAB. So where's AP? That's here. So this is KAB. All right. Also, we're told MPN is a straight line. All right, there we go. So that's MPN, and we need to find the value of K. Okay, let's work backwards here. So to find K, we want the vector AB and the vector AP. AB won't be difficult. AB is just B, okay? So because this is a parallelogram, AB would be the same as OC, so we know well, let's just write that down. So we know the vector AB is B. Now we want AP. How can we find AP? Well, this would be A, AO plus OM plus MP. What would MP be? That's the difficult part. Well, firstly, we know it's some part of MN. So let's go ahead and find MN first. MN. That's a half B plus 3A. If this was, this is the vector A as well. That's two times that. So 1A plus 2A is 3A. So MN is a half B plus 3A. And we know because that's a straight line, MP must be some uh, multiple of MN. Okay, so let's just keep that in the back of our heads for now. Let's also find a different expression for, for MP. Well, we could say MP, we could go around this way, or we could go around this way. Actually, let's go around this way because we want to include KAB in there. So MP would be uh, negative half B plus A plus K plus KAB. Now here we can say, well, that's just KB, right? Because AB was B. All right, actually, let's, um, let's relabel that on the diagram to make it clearer. Okay, so we have an expression for MP. Let's simplify this. This would be A plus K take a half B. So I've combined those B parts together and factorized out the B, so it would be K take a half. Now let's look at these two vectors, MN and MP. Uh, these parts and we also know that MP must be some multiple of MN. Let's look at the A parts of those. Something to note here that might not be immediately obvious is if you have two parallel vectors, so let's just use some random letters. So let's say we had A, B. This is not related to this question, by the way. This is just an example. So let's say A, B equaled some multiple of B, C. Okay. And we know, let's just say BC equals uh, A plus B. Just an easy example. Uh, then AB would be KA plus KB. In other words, whenever you multiply parallel vectors, the coefficients will be multiplied by the same thing. Okay, so whatever that multiple is, is applied equally to both parts of that vector. Um, so for this example, to get from MP to MN, I need to multiply by the same thing. So if we look at this vector MN, to get from MP to MN, well, let's look at the coefficients of A. MP had a coefficient of 1. MN has a coefficient of 3. I must be multiplying by 3 in order for that coefficient of A to go from 1 to 3. I'm multiplying by 3. Therefore, I can say that uh, k take a half, k take a half, 
multiplied by 3 equals a half. Okay, that's this idea. Whatever we multiply the whole vector by, we're multiplying each part of that vector by the same thing. So if I multiply the vector a by 3, I also have to multiply this b vector by 3. So then I can say 3 multiplied by k take a half equals a half, and I can solve this for k. So expand out the brackets, this would be 3k take 3 on 2 equals a half. And then add that 3 on 2 to the other side, or that's like a half plus 1 and a half. So 3k equals 2, and then k equals 2 on 3. And that's your final answer for this question. Um, so there you go, that was uh, a 5 mark question. Uh, again, we're kind of basically just applying these two notes here. You know, parallel vectors are scalar multiples, and if they are parallel and they share a point, they are collinear. That point that I just made for that question is a bit trickier, like the idea that the coefficients are multiplied by the same thing. So just keep that in mind for future reference. Anyways, on to the last question I'm going through. So this one says, in the diagram, M is the midpoint of AB. OP equals A, OA equals 3A, OB equals B. BPX is a straight line such that BX equals KBP. Find the value of K if MX is parallel to BO. And I just made a note of an alternative way of asking this question, but you can just ignore that for now. Well, if you want to give that question a go after I go through this one, then that might be a good way to revise. Anyways, again, let's interpret this information on the diagram. So we have OP equals A, that's marked in. OA, OA, where's OA? Oh, that's 3A. So that means PA is 2A. Okay, so how can we write that in? I guess we can put 2A uh, from P to A. All right. OB is marked in as B. BPX is a straight line such so that BX equals KBP. All right. If we had the vector BP, BX would be some multiple of that. And it says find the value of K if MX is parallel to BO. Right, so MX is parallel to BO. Fair enough. So that would mean that uh, MX is some multiple of the vector B or XM. All right, so I'll take a note of that first. So the vector XM equals uh, some multiple of B. They've already used K, so let's use a different letter. I don't know, X, I guess. X, B. So it's some, it's parallel to B, so it's a multiple of B. The other point is M is the midpoint of AB. I forgot to mention that. So M is the midpoint of AB. All right, so we want to find a vector for BP. We actually have that already, right? That would be negative B plus A, or A take B, same thing. Next, we want to find BX. So we could write BX as BM plus MX. So let's see if we can find an expression for both of those vectors. So BM is half of BA. Uh, so actually, let's find BA. So BA is equal to 3A take B. So then we could say BM, BM is equal to half of this. So half of 3A take B, uh, which could be written as 3 on 2a take a half b. Okay, we have a bm. Let's see if we can find mx. Well, actually, we've said that's xb, some multiple of b. Uh, so then we could write bx as... Oh, why did I find xm? I'm not sure. Oh, because that's the same direction as b. So mx will be negative something b. Okay, so BX is equal to BM, which is 3 on 2A take half B, plus, oh, sorry, take some multiple of B. All right, that's actually going to be enough information to solve this. Remember what we're saying about the question four. Look at the coefficients of BP and BX, sp specifically A. Uh, this x kind of makes it difficult with b, but with a, we can see we've multiplied it by one and a half, right? Uh, remember, the coefficients 
What if we multiply one coefficient by, we multiply the other one by the same thing. So what we've done is we've multiplied BP by 3 on 2. Okay. And then so we can say B, sorry, BX is equal to 3 on 2 BP. All right, so we multiply, if you look at the diagram, we multiply this length BP by one and a half and we get BX. So final answer there, K equals three on two. Um, so yeah, so actually you see kind of some common themes in these questions. So looking at the coefficients of the vectors, looking at the coefficients of A, you know, seeing what you multiply by, it always has to be the same for both. So we could effectively ignore this X and just look at A and say, well, I've multiplied BP by 3 on 2. So K must be 3 on 2. All right, so there are some examples of those tricky vector geometry questions. I hope that was helpful. Please leave a like if you did find that helpful. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more content, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.